Welcome to another edition of the Official Catch Up Podcast. It's me, Ben, uh, and joined as ever by Chris. Chris, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Uh, been quite busy still. Uh, I was hoping to get to a game yesterday, but obviously Scott Rail. I feel like I mentioned them quite a lot on this podcast, but I still on strike, so no luck trying to get to any games that I wanted to. But um, nah, I've, I've, to be fair, I've not been at a lot of games in the last month or so, but um, certainly been watching a fair bit of uh, Lowland League and other uh, leagues to, to to sort of look at players. So yeah, um, not been at games, Ben, but still keeping myself busy with football, as as you probably are aware. I bloody Scott Rail and their, their streaks. Uh, my, my videographer couldn't come to the game yesterday. Um, my wife, aka the club secretary, was also away, so I had to do team lines, update socials, uh, video the game, uh, what, what the way I was do the music for the PA, everything. I was just doing all sorts of jobs there again. So, aye. Um, but I guess solidarity, solidarity with the workers and the <laughs> um, try to get that pay rise. It's a bit of a, a catch twenty two, isn't it? Really, let's be honest. Um, hopefully, get what they want in terms of pay rise. Uh, there's been plenty of football taking place over the weekend, but before we get there, I just want to uh, just quick mention, uh, pass on our condolences to the family and friends uh, of football player Gavin Stokes. Gavin uh, tragically uh, died in a, a car accident. On uh, Gavin played for teams like Dundee United, Alwa, Kilburnie, Arvin Meadow, and Mary Hill, and where he scored. Um, I think it was one of the fastest goals um, in like Scottish football history. Certainly, um, he scored within two seconds of a, a match from almost from the halfway line. So, um, yeah, just a from myself and Chris, we'd like to pass on our condolences uh, and thoughts uh, going to everyone in you. Yeah, um, the way I, I kind of knew Gavin is when he was playing for um, Edisport, aka Caledonian Braves. Um, he was playing for them when we first started covering the league, obviously. As far as I'm aware, I didn't know the know Gavin personally, but um, I know that he was well well liked around the leagues. Um, good character, really good guy. You know, obviously, um, I think we were kind of one of the sort of first to to sort of break the news. Um, I did see that you know it was in the media, obviously, and that he had uh, tragically died. I think it was early hours Saturday morning, actually. But um, yeah, I mean, thirty year old, no no age at all. I mean, that's younger than us, Ben. So. Um, it's scary. Uh, we have lost a lot of good guys in terms of football um, over the last sort of few years. I mean, um, Alan Patterson as well at East Kilbride and EK Thistle, another another good guy. And it's, I think, when you you know more, you get to know more of these sort of guys around football. It's always sad when when you lose uh, you lose them, especially when I think football. We might have our rivalries and differences, but we all come together when this sort of stuff happens. And um, yeah, massive, you know, heartfelt condolences to everyone that knew Gavin and such a, a shock. And uh, yeah, you know, condolences to his family. It's a uh, uh, sad situation. Yeah, so we've got plenty, plenty of football obviously, to talk about uh, from the weekend. We'll start in the Lowland League, as we always do. Uh, we'll start on Friday night, uh, where Open Goal Broomhill defeated Cali Braves 3 1. Open goal down uh, one 0 uh, in the first half, but but battled back to get to get all three points. A uh, big crowd by all accounts at uh, at Broadwood. So uh, decent result for Broomhill, given how how well Cali Braves have, have been playing in recent. Chris, yeah. Um, as far as I'm aware, Broomhill were were excellent that sort of second half. Uh, I think Kevin Kyle mentioned that it was probably the best of they've, they've played a uh, half of football this season. Um, really good result, obviously. We've kind of hyped up the Braves as, as being a, a really good team, um, getting a few re- results. Obviously, last last weekend they drew uh, East Kilbride, so for Broomhill to, to go out and beat them 3-1, uh, really good. I mean, one guy I've, I think I've mentioned is obviously J- Jamie Semple in the past. I've always rated him. I don't think he's really lived up to the hype yet in the Lowland League, but he seems to be getting there now. I think when we... I, I kind of said my piece to Moza, Moza kind of said, well... In the early games, uh, Jamie was kind of playing up up front himself, and um, it's maybe not not been the best for him. Uh, it's a tougher job, but now I feel like they're they're adding a wee bit more to the the forward line to help him out. So he's, he's starting to get in amongst the goals as well. Um, yeah, uh, did you watch the Broomhill documentary this morning? I watched it this morning already. Yeah, I, <clears throat> my wife's away for the weekend, as I mentioned earlier, so uh, been left to my own devices and watched the Grand Prix, and I started the Broomhill. Uh, documentary on another, another great piece of content from 
uh, the guys. But one thing I do want to bring up, not about documentary, but what I heard from Kevin Kyle the other day on the, one of the podcasts, uh, he mentioned that he's wording, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was around the fact that teams below uh, the Lowland League are, are what are we wanting to, to get promoted to go up come up and beat Broomhill. Um, so I, Kev, I don't know if you're listening to this podcast, but that's a that's a wild take if I've ever heard one. There's no <laughs> way clubs like Darvo, Cowan and Rangers, Lockin Lake, Linlithgow Rose, uh, Sejena, or whoever else are, are spending money to get licensed because they want to beat Broomhill. That that's just absolute nonsense. I'm sorry, but um I respect his his comments, he's got a lot of good things to say about football, but that that's a poor take. Um I don't know where that's came from, but that's certainly not the case. And let's be honest, a lot of these teams are have got visions way way higher than the Lowland League. Certainly, um, mm-hmm. we're, not, we're not doing this to to get into the Lowland League because let's face it, the Lowland League uh, for a club like in the West or the East, for example, it's not that great a sell to be honest. Like in terms of crowds and the travel might be involved, you want to get into League Two or League One. That's the that's the aspiration. So yeah, just. I had a bony pick with that comment. You see, I love what they do. I love the content. I love listening to what they have to say in terms of um, their football knowledge. I saw Ferry go on a lot about these guys want to beat us. These guys want to beat us. Us versus them. I think it's part of the mentality and not necessarily you know, looking at logically more, more like creating that feeling, right, it's us versus the world, which which can be helpful. I think the best thing about that documentary that I saw, uh, I've not watched it all yet, but I uh, got up to the Civil game. I love how they they done the countdown of yards to the to the civil pitch. I mean, it is a it is a bit of a trek uh, for anyone that's been to Christie Gillis Park, but I thought that was class. Hundred and fifty odd yards or something like that to the park. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, again, I think it comes down to um, Sai Sai and the team just trying to create a mentality that it is us versus them. Obviously, there's a lot of negative comments about Broomhill and or sorry, Open Goal Broomhill, I should say, um, when they've came on board, and I think. They, they, they feel it, they see the comments probably more than us and anyone else. So um, there's certainly people that I know that like seeing them get beat. Whether, um, you know, a, an East Coast Bride or Spartans or Darvo or, you know, Kilwinning Rangers do, I, I, I don't think so. From a club level, maybe it's more more so on the fans. The fans want to see their team beat Broomhill, but it's not necessarily on a club, <laughs> club level. I think that's, yeah, I think I agree with you there, Ben. It's a wee bit of a uh, far-fetched statement. I mean, absolutely take them in the cup, but I would say that all day long. And a cup competition, totally different. That's fair game. But clubs aren't spending the money on licensing to get into the Lowland League to play Broomhill. It's not that much of a carrot, let's be honest. I don't think we've seen the best of Broomhill yet. I think, the again, it goes back to me actually not thinking they're, they've been that great, but they've, they're have you know they not that far away from East Coast Pride now in the league. Um, I think they could go up another level. And it's getting to that level, uh, Sai. Obviously, we all know he has a way of playing. He gets frustrated when the players aren't there listening to him. He mentioned, obviously, Kirk putting Kirk Broadfoot up front um, against Civil, which he thought was a mistake. But, I mean, if you're a player looking at that and you've got Kirk Broadfoot up front, you would think, OK, route one football, but then size telling the boys, don't play with route one football. So it, it can be a wee bit of um, confusing at times, I think, uh, when it comes to side, but how he wants to play and... Um, but yeah, fair play to Broomhill, they're right up there now, uh, and it looks like they will be challenging, which is a uh, good for them, good for Sai. Um, I, 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 I like style, uh, Sai's sort of style of management, I think I would say. Um, he's very vocal. I actually appreciate Sai more now that I've seen a wee bit more in the sort of management side of it. So yeah, I, I, I've got I warmed a wee bit to Sai. I know he's uh, shouting and swearing, but I would imagine I'd probably be the same if I was in his position. <laughs> No, absolutely. I think you can tell he's a he's a good manager and he, he knows his football and um yeah, I think there's maybe a bit of like pride and mm-hmm. uh, in the way he wants to play and he doesn't want to forgo maybe um results and things like that to, to to stick to what he wants to play, which is fine, I think. But I think there has to be an element of kind of maybe sometimes game management where you're making sure that you're doing the things to get the, the, the wins when especially when you're maybe in front or um you're chasing the game and he talks quite a bit about the day I think they played Berwick and they went 4-4-2 and they obviously won that game they came back I think from 2-0 down to 1-3-2 and it's a great result that day but he was very much he didn't really want to go to that 4-4-2 and I think maybe the backroom staff I'm not too sure how it all played out but 
they were maybe like, oh, we should go two up and, and it's worked. And certainly as the season gets on, they'll need, they'll need to do more of that where they, where they actually adapt and try and manage games properly rather than um, worrying about expressing yourself and playing football this way and that way, which is which is great to see a team playing, like, playing out for the back and um, wanting to play football um, stylishly and uh, passing, moving and things like that. But yeah, they're going to have to, if they want to challenge, they're going to have to make sure that they are properly, properly managing these games. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we'll get into it when we talk about East Kilbride because there are certain elements where um, I think size solely focused on the team, the team effort. But when you don't have that cohesion, I mean, a lot of these boys have been thrown together since the start of the season. You do have individuals that have to step up. If you do not know exactly, there's teams in this league like Spartans, maybe a strollers that know exactly what they're going to do because they've played together for so many years. Um, obviously, not all of the players, but. When you don't have that, individuals have to step up. Um, so, yeah, they're good individual players. I know Sai wants a team effort as well, but sometimes you have to have a wee bit of both. It's not all about the team effort. Individuals have to step up. And I think there's certain moments which is called out, to be fair, uh, where individuals haven't. I think Gary Fraser, for example, against Strollers. Um, Sai, I think, called him off it just after half time because he wasn't really impressed with him. Um, and Gary Fraser's a brilliant player, probably... Unlucky that he's not been in the team of the month since that that point. Uh, I think he had a few injury worries at the start of the season as well. But yeah, you do need these guys to step up, especially if you're going for a title as well. Next game then, Bonus United one, Gala Dean Rovers two. Great result away for for Gala, given the kind of the poor kind of season they've had so far, and uh, they'll be delighted with a result away from home. Yeah. Um, I think, in fairness to Bonus, I think they were down to ten men. If I remember, another red red card, or a, um, I think they had two last week. So again, we're seeing this sort of, you know, suspension trouble and red cards. And a, a Jamie McCormack, I think it was, who's been a, you know, a key player for them uh, since joining. And um, yeah, it's it's a tough one. But as you say, great result for Gala. Gala have been struggling. Uh, it's a type of win. That they needed to just to pick them up a wee bit. Uh, we'll probably talk more about the likes of Xander Murray uh, than we have about Gallows football uh, recently in terms of in terms of uh, that. But yeah, it's a fantastic result for Gala. Um, can they can go on from there? I'm not sure. I, again, for I always say this. It's weird how it always falls, but Gala are similar to Broomhill. Um, Martin Scott has a similar way of wanting to play. With Sai Ferry, and they always seem to come after what uh, each other uh, on the podcast. So it's always easy easy to say that. But no, fantastic. Um, Gal haven't been at their best, as I said, and it's a good result. But yeah, um, ten men, you'd probably want them to to score a wee bit more against a, a ten men bonus side. I, I'm not overly convinced uh, they're out of the water yet, Gal, with one result. I guess it's that kind of that opportunity to kind of kickstart your season and maybe build from that and say, look, we played well in, in this game and got the result and can 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 kick on from there, hopefully for for Gala's sake. And our team that looks like it maybe have kind of potentially kickstarted our season is that beat star three uh, one victory over Bay Rangers. It's a fantastic result. Um, there was a really good picture, obviously, of uh, girls and the the boys celebrating and. Uh, and that's kind of what you wanted to see from that Dalbiti side, the first win in the league this season. Quite a few shocks uh, during the weekend, actually, in the Lone League. I noticed some results really stood out, but certainly Dalbiti getting their first win over uh, uh, Berwick's a fantastic result. Don't really know what's going on with Berwick. I think we've kind of alluded to it feels like there's something going on at the club. Don't know the ins and outs, but um, very sort of strange stuff happening and and that's all you don't want that at any club because it becomes a distract uh, distraction. You're f- so focused if you want to do well when any league has to be the football. It can't be any players or any backroom drama or whatever it is. They'll be by all accounts, I believe, um were fantastic. Two wonder goals and a wonder save from uh, McCready and goals for them kind of kept kind of saw them through for the, the three points there. But more of that from Dalbiti. It'll be uh, interesting, certainly at the bottom, if they can sort of pick up a few more wins. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think the the thing we were always saying in this podcast was, kind of, thank goodness for Dalbiti in terms of the, the, the relegation. I know it's early in terms of the season, but we didn't really see where maybe we turn around. I mean, this is him, the same crop of players. It's not as long as they went out and made kind of wholesale changes within bringing plenty of new guys in. 
last couple of weeks. They, they probably will do that. I'd expect probably find uh, the manager will find his own players that he wants to bring in as well. So uh, they can only get better as far as I'm concerned. But it's a great result in Berwick. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. There seems there definitely seems to be a problem. But we hark back to statements about focusing on leagues and things like that, and it just doesn't seem like it's all it's all going right. It's always been something we've said about Berwick is that they're great off the park and um, the, the rebuilding they've done in terms of uh, the club and kind of repositioning themselves a little bit. But certainly on the partner now, that it's, it's not going it's not going all great for for Berwick. Next game then, uh, this will be the probably the shock result of the weekend. East Kilbride nil, Cowden Beath one. I think we've talked about both teams plenty in this podcast. Uh, did we ever expect Cowden Beath to go to K Park and get a, a win and a clean sheet? Absolutely not. So fair play to Cowden Beath. Um, East Kilbride, obviously a team I've said I spoke about plenty up there challenging. Yeah, so from East Kilbride's perspective, it's certainly not a, a game that. I'm sure they'll be obviously disappointed from losing, but it's not going to have a, ma- a major impact on uh, on their season, I would think. And it's not going to be good value for, for the season ahead. But yeah, absolutely fair play, Cowden Beath. Um, didn't expect that at all. So uh, a good result and maybe something they can hopefully build on as well. Yeah, I, I'm starting to see a wee bit of a difference in Cowden Beath. Um, I certainly watch a lot of their highlights now and uh, they do seem a lot well, a lot more organised from the start of the season. It's like players are are uh, are really sort of going with what, I'm guessing what um, Morris Ross is, is telling them. Again, it goes back to obviously listening to your manager, but they, they definitely seem like a more organised sort of team, um, which which yeah, obviously that comes with time. Obviously, we're more than a few months into the season now, so um, I really like the look of that Ewan Thompson boy that's on loan. He looks like a really decent player. I think the biggest shock for me, um, in fairness to East Kilbride, they wore down to 10 men again. Um, and we have said, obviously, it's, it's not easy winning with 10 men in this league. But the biggest shock for me was the fact that Sam Newman got the goal. I uh, saw a wee bit of Sam last season at Spartans. He was never really known as a, a sort of goal-scoring midfielder. But um, yeah, fair play to Sam. But that, that was probably his, his, a, a big shock uh, uh, East Kilbride, again, it goes down to this sort of individuals. Individuals really need to step up. They, they always seem to have chances. And, you know, when they're, they're good, they're, they are a great side. Uh, we know they have really good players. Uh, a, a team that is sort of built for the higher levels of Scottish football. I mean, you could probably put them into League Two and they, they would do well, but they need to get to that point first. Now, it's even more tense for them. Um, the pressure is on because Broomhill are chasing them. Spartans are are up there as well now. Obviously, Rangers B have played less less games than them. Uh, the pressure is now on and they need to start picking up because they've not really been great the last few weeks. They've kind of kind of seen off results. They obviously drew with Cali Braves. Now they've been beat by Ken Beef. Um, K Park seems to be an issue. I think all three of the, the games they lost at, uh, at home. So that's not really what you want to see from a top side. Uh, your home should be, you know, your, your strong area. Yeah, East Cobride... Again, you, they just need to step up the players. Um, I'm sure they'll they'll be getting told the same by the gaffer, but um, they just need to do better because we know they can. We know we, we have seen a this East Kilbride team and the players, you know, pretty much destroy other teams uh, of of similar standing or quality of um, of kind and beef. You know, in, in fairness to them, but yeah, they shouldn't be getting beat at home um, for how good they are. But we know that that's football. If you're not playing your best. Uh, teams will punish you, and we've seen it the last two results for East Kilbride. Yeah, East Kilbride, a quality side, great players um, individually as well, so uh, Kevin Rukovic as well looks like a good manager for them, so I don't see it being a, a massive issue, but as you mentioned there about the league, I forgot about Rangers B having so many games in hand, which is obviously going to be crucial, I think if they win all their games in hand, they can go about I think, eight points clear or something like that on um on East Kilbride, so it could be potentially a, a, a big gap there opening up. And as you say, Broomhill are banging form as well just now. Yep. The, 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 I think one uh, undefeated in something like eight or nine maybe now. So they're certainly a team that are, are motoring and, and, and got, the, got the ability there. So I don't think he's going to be too worried, certainly, because I think you, you put yourself down to a, a bad result and move on. It's not going to be the end of the world for, for them. Next game then, East Stirlingshire 3, Gretna 1. Uh, I don't know if the Gretna fans want to just gloss over this one or <laughs> actually have a, 
have a conversation. Uh, great result for Shire, first one of the season for them. Two goals for, for Jamie Kirkpatrick. He was on loan at the Buffs last season, so always keep an eye out for what Jamie and uh, Tony Coots are up to, uh, being former Buffs players. So good win for them. And disappointing for Grenner. Obviously, they, they, they had been on a bit of a um, bit of a heater, shall we say, and, and doing, doing well and had turned the season around. But again, probably a bit like he's going by, it probably won't be that big a, a, big a deal in the, in the long run. They'll be, they'll be okay, and I'm sure they'll, they'll bounce back next week. East Allenshire, I, I I felt it was coming for them. We've we've talked them up in terms of the the quality of their squad. Uh, squad, uh, they had a really decent draw against Strollers, which is obviously not the easiest place to go to. Um, could have potentially won that game as well. So it was coming for them. But what a difference a week makes because obviously you know getting hammered off a Cowden B five nil. Uh, Dell obviously needed he, he got a reaction from the boys midweek against Strollers and they went out and won against a, a Grenna team that was bang on form. Shire, yeah, um, we've talked about it. I think they, they have a good team. It's just um, they need to watch the, the cards, obviously, and the suspensions and the injuries, if, if at all possible, because they, they still don't have the depth. I think they've added a few players since, um, you know, I think um, David Moyes' nephews um, <laughs> moved there the last couple of games. Harvey Moyes has been really good for them, so uh, he could be an interesting signing. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if I expect Shire to, to, to now go on a bit of a streak or a run. Um, I think there's still a lot of work to do. Boys still need to, to keep their heads up and, and, and play well and not make daft mistakes. Gretna, uh, probably a wee bit different with them. I think they will get a few more wins. Um, as you say, I think, I don't know if it's too early to call them safe, but with the team they have and the, the momentum they've built, um, I think they'll just move on and, and get back to it uh, when they can. I think as far as getting, I can say those we know what I've talked about them playing to in this podcast. Yeah, I think they're probably not completely safe, but there's enough teams I think below them that you would look at and go like that. Yeah, they're probably going to finish below Gretna in the in the long run. So, um, providing they keep doing what they're doing, um, getting the odd result here and there, and keeping um, obviously the the run they had there was was excellent and. Uh, I'm sure I'll say that I'm sure they'll do fine and, and they'll, they'll bounce back uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, next game then Rangers B three Edinburgh University one. Uh, pretty much a routine victory for for Rangers B. We don't need to talk too much about those. They're, they're a quality side and um, got great players. Edinburgh Uni are I'll just start Edinburgh Uni. They're the same kind of team every year. They're, they're down the bottom. They're struggling. We mentioned they'll be earlier earlier on who have obviously got their first one of the season and uh, they look like potentially they could um, climb the table if they can get a bit of form together. So I did my uni, I think, are the team probably to be to be most worried just now, I would say, Chris. I spoke to Alex Hamilton about uh, an FM thing actually, but um he's injured at the moment, so he's a massive loss, massive character, not great. Um kind of leaves a hole in that defence because he is such a a decent defender at the level. Um, I, the issue with Edinburgh Uni, I think, is we don't often know too much about them. You know, it's the it's the Edinburgh Uni uh, subs really that, that do their their media, yeah, social media. So I think they're probably less interested about you know getting team lines out and whatnot. So uh, it can be quite difficult to to know exactly what the teams are at Edinburgh Uni. Um, David Maskery, it's good for him to score. He will always get goals for Edinburgh Uni. Uh, but Rangers B, look, they're going to be near the top of the league, if not the top of the league in the next few weeks. Um, I know there's a few cup games, so um, they'll be right down the throats of East Cobride and potentially they're going to be uh, overtaking them at some point as well. Um, so, yeah, rut- rut- routine, as you say, routine victory, kind of as expected as as we would think and other people would think. So, yeah, not not much there. Um, but, yeah, fair play, Rangers B. Um, I think, yeah, I think they're going to be overtaking East Cobride soon. Next game then um, was the Sparks 3, uh, Cumbernauld Colts no. Good one for, uh, for the Spartans. Takes them up to fourth in the league, just kind of three points behind uh, Broom Hill and uh, got a, a game in hand over EK, which will hopefully for them close the gap. But um, Spartans going about their business quite quietly, I would say, Chris. Yeah, I mean, we've not had much to, to say about Spartans early doors because they have... Um, the thing that, that kind of separates Spartans for me and other teams is the fact they've played pretty much all the the top teams. 
uh, and they're still quite high up the table. So again, it's a it's a quiet one. You're not really focused on Spartans. As soon as Blair Henderson gets firing, Jamie Dishington got a goal, Kevin Waugh, uh, I think Mikey Allen was the other one as well. So if these boys start firing for Spartans, they will be right up there again. Um, obviously, I know quite a lot about the Spartans side. Um, they can beat anyone on their day. And it's just about whether they can keep the momentum. Um, they're playing a Cumberland Old side that isn't in the best of form. Uh, there's a couple of guys in Cumberland Old, actually, some of the younger players that I think are, are really good. And they, but you know, when you're coming up against a, a Spartans team full of experience, full of quality players that have won, you know, the Lowland League and, and all these sort of non-league trophies, it's going to be hard for a for a younger uh, come on old coat side, despite them obviously having a wee bit of potential and quality. Um, yeah, Spartans, I'm really keen to to see how, how they do over the, I wouldn't say, well, can't say over the next few weeks because obviously the, it'll be Scottish Cup duty and um, I'm probably going to go to a long go game because they've got Lundlough go away in the Cup, the Scottish Cup, and I think that'll be a massive test for them, uh, obviously knowing how how highly I rate Lundlough go. So when we get back to league duty, I think it will be interesting to watch the likes of maybe a Spartans or a Broomhill, uh, potentially even maybe a Stirling Uni and a Strollers that are obviously playing today. Um, sadly, I, I did say we'll, we'll talk about Strollers and then I forgot they were playing on Sunday. So, <laughs> so yeah, we, we will have some uh, more Strollers chat when we can, obviously, when we know a wee bit more. Next game then, tonight, Juniors, no, Celtic B1. I don't know an awful lot about this game, to be honest, in terms of detail, but Celtic B, decent side. I don't really rate tonight, to be honest now, I think. Um, obviously, they were East of Scotland champions last year, but from what I've seen of them recently, I, I don't I don't rate them. So, um, I think they struggle in, in a lot of games and uh, maybe, I don't know if it's maybe new manager coming in, maybe he's trying to find their feet a little bit, perhaps, but and um, Trinent have not been a team that I, I expected them to be. Certainly, I expected a lot more from Trinent uh, when they moved, when they got promoted, and thought maybe they'd be they'd be up there, but just not seen it from them. Celtic B or Celtic B, they um, got good individual players, probably maybe lacking experience a little bit, a little bit times, but uh, decent result for them from uh, from Sunday. Yeah, a really good away win for Celtic B. We know how quality Celtic B. Uh, you know they're up there. Um, with Rangers for me in terms of their quality maybe the results haven't always been the greatest for Celtic B but uh, to beat Trinent away um, really good result Trinent again I think it comes down to um, the new management obviously a different way of playing uh, it's not been that long since he's he's came on board and Callum Elliott was obviously a, again one of these guys that had a specific way of wanting to play Colin Nish I think is a wee bit different in terms of how he wants to play it takes you know a uh, it takes time to gel. I don't know how much time we're going to give them, obviously, uh, before we're overly critical. You seem to have your, uh, what's, that, what's that old expression? F- flags on the mass already or whatever? What was it? <laughs> so, so, uh, absolutely. So, um, but yeah, Trinent are a good side. They've got really decent players. Um, but to be fair, they're probably living up to my expectations. Of them. I didn't think they'd be at the very, very top of the league um, at the start of the season. I thought they were a good side, probably high end, but yeah, I didn't think they would be right up there, and it's kind of shown recently with the results that they probably won't be come the end of the season. Yeah, I think they're one of those teams we mentioned like last week. They're going to be just fine. They'll, they'll, they'll stay up. They're not going to get relegated. They're not going to win the league. They're just going to sit in that kind of middle section of the of the the league, certainly. And uh, they're out the Scottish Cup, obviously, and they're still they're still in the South Challenge Cup, I think. And, uh, that's probably something they want to focus on for the for the season season ahead. Uh, that's all for the lonely. We've got one game taking place today, University of Stirling versus Civil Service Strolls. Uh, that takes place today, I think. We obviously can't talk about much detail with that, but Chris, what do you expect from, from that game today? Two good teams. Strollers are a wee bit kind of similar going under the radar. I think they're well up there. Uh, Stirling Uni are well up there that we know. The, we You kind of mentioned it last week, Ben. They started their... Um, you know, their defence of their Bucks Premier North title midweek. Um, so the uni games will be coming thick and fast for them as well. It's going to be a challenge, obviously, if some of the boys uh, played Wednesday now coming into a, a Sunday game. You, I think Chris will need to uh, rotate his squad a wee bit in terms of fitness. But they're young guys, so I wouldn't expect too many problems unless there's obviously injuries and whatever else that come from these games. But um, it's going to be a tough one. Strollers are a really good side and they're in fairness, they're both right up there uh, in the league, probably against the expectation 
um, from where they are. Strollers, I would expect them to be around that that kind of spot. But um, yeah, it, it's tough when you've got the B teams added because you, if you think a team's maybe going to be fourth in the league, add you add the you know Rangers, B Celtic, B then and that kind of turns into six. You know, it, it's stuff like that. Um, I, I take into consideration also. Okay, moving on then, we'll look at the East of Scotland uh, Football League uh, in the Premier Division. We'll, we'll start with uh, Broxburn 2, Pennycook 1. Disappointing result for, for Pennycook and um, given the result that Lomoth Coros had for one victory against Crossgates, the kind of gap there start to, to appear in the in the top of the table for uh, Pennycook to, to try and chase down Lomoth Coros. Broxburn are a really good team. Uh, I mentioned them um, last week in the kind of, with all due respect to the likes of Broxburn, and that's why, because I rate them. I rate them as a really good team. Um, Errol Douglas, a guy I know from Kelly, really like the guy. He's, he's only recently came back into football last season uh, with Lovie and Fissel, and he seems to be bang on form again. Uh, he'll get the goals at Broxburn. Um, he, Errol's a weird one because um, he, he kind of switched, he was always a striker then he kind of switched to, to sort of centre-back now he's back to, to being a forward again so so it's, it's probably t- took some time to, to get used to but Broxburn are a, another team that are, are, are really good in East of Scotland Pennycook, of course it's disappointing for them if they're, they're wanting to uh, to keep the, the pressure on the left goal but, but I think it, it's not a shock result in, in a sense because uh, Broxburn do have a really good side um, Obviously disappointing for Penny Cook since we've been raving them up uh, recently. Obviously Andy Forbes uh, and amongst the goals, Andy goals as we started calling them. Uh, yeah, it's a disappointing one, but they'll they'll brush themselves down and and go again. I would imagine. Uh, Rose versus Crossgates was a four-one victory for uh, Lamath got Rose. You mentioned the Rose earlier. They're a quality side. They're going to they're, they're probably going to win this league for as far as we're concerned. Uh, but just keep keep more and on and, and getting the results. Fantastic result against a really good Crossgates Primrose side. We've we've hyped them up a wee bit, uh, probably as much as Lonough Goros. Lonough Goros, um, I mentioned <laughs> midweek. Obviously, the the media guys got all these sort of we tagline names for uh, how good the the, the Lonough Goros players are. Obviously, I don't think we're, we've hyped them up that much in terms of like classy Cunningham and all that sort of stuff. But um, I'm actually a wee bit shocked that it was as much as that because I thought Crossgates had a had more of a chance in that game, uh, or to keep it closer, I should say. But Lundlifko are just steamrolling everyone at the moment. It's, it's, and that's why I'm I'm really looking forward to that Spartans game in the the Scottish Cup because potentially that's good. That's a cracking game. Uh, two good sides uh, up against each other, and I think I think it'll. I don't really, uh, I don't really want to say too much in terms of levels based on a cup game, but it will. I'll give. I'll give a sort of. I think it will give a. A look of where Linlithgow are compared to, you know, a, a decent uh, one of the top lowland league sides. So, um, but yeah, it's a cup game. You never really know how it's going to turn out. Obviously, if if one team turns up and the other one doesn't. Okay, looking elsewhere around the the East of Scotland games, probably one one couple you want to look at in the second division. Dalkeith uh, Thistle one, St Andrews three. Dal- first loss of the season for Dalkeith. Yes, yeah, St Andrews uh, a bit of a weird one because you know they they also beat St Jenna earlier in the season when it was probably not expected. So um, yeah, I guess the the giant killers of the league or whatever they always seem to beat the top teams. But yeah, really fantastic result. Uh, Dalkey for a, a really good side for for the sort of level. Um, but yeah, fair play to St Andrews. They seem to be uh, pulling out these sort of. You know, not massive shock results, but certainly shock results in terms of uh, where we think the teams are at the moment. So, um, yeah, fair play, St Andrews, really good result. To St Andrews' credit, they are sitting fourth and they're only two points behind St Gentle yep. League. So, they're a team that will be eyeing those um, promotion spots, three up, three down, um, within the, the second division. Uh, they'll be they'll be looking at St Gentle and, and wanting to to try and grab that, that third spot. Just talking about St Genta, they drew one each with uh, Harriet Watt uh, University of the weekend. don't know what's happened to Jamie Finlay, you know, we've got the, the, the Jamie Finlay fan club, he's one on the bench the weekend, I think he's maybe been injured, uh, mm-hmm. not 100% sure, but he's, he's not been around, I've not seen him mentioned at all for St Genta, and um, hopefully gets back to back to the, the starting lineup and scoring goals, I, um, I'm sure, but if not, then I'm sure there'll be plenty of, West of Scotland teams looking for a, for a striker if he's not playing. And uh, 
and just a wee non Harry at what obviously a well drilled team, Beji Koya always has the boys right up for every game. Uh, we've not really spoke a lot about Harry at what apart from the the guys that tend to come up the leagues, but um yeah, they, they're tough on their day. Um, you know, cause similar to, to kind of Stirling Uni where it's probably a, a lesser level, obviously, being in the east of Scotland, but um I they they're well drilled in terms of their players and obviously young guys, fit guys, you expect them to to uh, to really give the the more experienced heads a, a, a bit of a run as well. So um yeah, good result. Okay, moving on then look at the, the South of Scotland uh, league. There was actually a few games played in the, the South of Scotland League for change rather than um the Millie Cups Cup. and whatnot, yep. <laughs> Cups that they have to play. Um Abbeyville drew one each with Lock Arthur. So uh, Cali Braves reserves got beat one 0 off of Cree Town. Mid Annandale one three one against Jim Stewart. This day Wanderers beat Lock Lock Maven. Even. Yep. <laughs> I never get it right. I know I get called out for that before. Five one and St Cuthbert's Wanderers one two one uh, against Upper Annandale. Uh, see, not still not a lot of games played in the league. I think there's only like maybe two or three games played. Uh, Cree Town sitting top of the table just now. Just Lock are only a, a point behind, and um, yes, there's still not a lot to. To write home about, to be honest. To, yeah. Certainly on the teams and, and the form and things like that. So, uh, but in terms of three town, three town obviously started well. Um, I think they've won three out of three and doing, doing pretty well at the top of the table. Yeah. Um, obviously, the drawing look at Fissel with Abbey Vale as well. They're, they're another sort of couple of sides we've talked about as well. So they, they'll be up there. It's very difficult, obviously, this early on because they're, they're well behind. Pretty much every other league at the moment in terms of games played, uh, obviously less teams as well. So um, yeah, uh, we'll see how it pans out at the south of Scotland. Uh, but yeah, I think that the, the favourites at the early stage, obviously Cree Town, um, Lockhart Fissel and Abbey Vale. Uh, there's probably a maybe you could add a couple others in there as well. But to me, it's an open league this season. We've mentioned it since the start. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see how it pans out more with one more results, but certainly you're right, three out of three for Cree Town. Uh, they certainly look like the team that's um, leading the, the way early on. Okay, moving on then, we'll go to the West of Scotland Premier League. Uh, we'll start with the game that was played on Friday night. It was Glen Afton 2, Davo 2. It was the first game under the lights for uh, Glen Afton after they getting their installation and their work towards their um, SFA licence. So, um, drop points for Davo, I think a pretty surprising one for me. Um, expected them to, to win that game comfortably, but um, a complete change from, from what they've been used to in the last few weeks, Chris. Yeah, uh, in fairness to Glen Afton, I think you've mentioned it before, Ben, obviously they can be a wee bit hit and miss. If they turn up, they're, they can be pretty decent. Obviously, it's a bit of an occasion if they're playing Friday with the new floodlights. They'll want to do well. Uh, it seems to me like the players have turned up. I think Darvo were down to 10 men as well, I believe. So a lot of, enough, yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of red cards um, seems to be this weekend, uh, and obviously nine times out of ten the play, uh, the teams with with ten men have lost uh, this week also. So um, you know, in fairness to Darvo, I think they were two one up, and then Glen Afton's went up and got the equaliser. So uh, it's it's a tricky one, but yeah, um, certainly you know when we've talked up Darvo. We, we expect them to sort of blow out teams, but, you know, they're, they're 11 or 10 men like everyone else. If you, you turn up against them, um, maybe get a, a wee bit of luck, show show the show them that you're not really afraid of them, regardless of their quality, I think anything can happen. And obviously, did the 10 men probably, it probably helped later into the game, obviously, because Darvo, I think, they, as I say, they took the lead just after uh, Megat was sent off, if I remember correctly, and then, uh, Glen Afton just stuck stuck to it, and then uh, from what I've heard, it's a deserved draw for them. Yeah, I think Glen Afton, given the, as you say, the season they probably had in terms of kind of bit stop start, they'll be delayed by a point against a team like Davo who have been flying. I think it probably gives the rest of the league a bit of a bit of confidence to Hope, say that yep. yeah, <laughs> Davo can be got at. There's, they have their weaknesses, and maybe you can get results against them if you play well and turn up and you know, come out firing and. Obviously, the sending off is going to be massive. Uh, by all accounts, I think Mick Kennedy yeah, also got sent off um, from the, oh. the stands. Um, however, I heard some, some, I don't know if it's true, but I heard somewhere that Mick got sent off in the first half, but was in the dugout for the second half. I don't really know if that definitely happened, but um, 
that was a story I heard in last yesterday. So um, I, I must have that, missed all that. I must have missed all that. But don't know how that look, played out. You, you've got to think, though, um, when you're coming up against these Darvels and Lifko Roses, uh, East Coast Brides, the, the majority of the time, the opposition has nothing to lose. No one is expecting you to 100%. beat them. So the, the pressure is on them to get the result, really. Um, and if it goes 2, 3, 4 now, it's not going to be your day. But if you can keep it close and do what you, you can as a team or a, an individual, as I say, sometimes it's individuals that step up and say, I really want to beat Darvel today. I really want to beat Lenlifco Rose today. It can happen, you know. Um, 11 versus 11. I know I made a comment a wee while ago. Um, I really, truly believe that every team is beatable. Um, and obviously, someone mentioned, obviously, um, Edinburgh Uni beating Real Madrid. I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about in the same sort of <laughs> level, level of, way, uh... but yeah. So, I mean, could Edinburgh Uni beat Real Madrid? Probably their youth team, maybe, but but um, no, every team is but uh, beatable. It's eleven versus eleven. If you you turn up and you do your best, um, I think I honestly think every team has a weakness. Um, we've probably talked a lot about like the East Coast Brides' weaknesses. We've talked a lot about Broomhill's weaknesses. Um, Darvel certainly have weaknesses. Also, you know, every team has a weakness, um, and it's not always about you know just make them uncomfortable. And with ten men. Um, certainly teams can, can become uh, uncomfortable and I think that's probably he- helped going after on the day. I'm not saying that's the whole the whole thing of why they, they drew you know they were uh, doing really well so I mean it probably has hindered uh, Darvel to be down to 10 Yeah I think um, okay, we know what Darvel are about not gonna, it's not going to affect them too much across the season like we mentioned we school bride it's, it's, it's a it's a it's draw point certainly but um, it's not going to be a massive issue for for Darvel across the across the season. And you're and you're not getting me mentioning what I think Darvel's weakness is because Mike, I don't want to follow it with Mick. I know he'd be right in the DMs, <laughs> but I certainly do believe they have at least one or two weaknesses from what I've seen. There you go. Get in touch with Chris if you <laughs> need some scouting detail. There, there we go. Chris has it all figured out. He? He's got the. the the 4 1 1 on how to beat uh, Darvel, certainly, it sounds like. Uh, moving on then to Saturday matches in the Pearl Division. Arthurly 11, Peters Hill 1. Um, I, don't know where it's, I don't know where to start with this one. Uh, absolutely didn't expect Arthurly to, to score 11 past anyone. Um, Peters Hill, from a bio account, I think I've kind of changed the squad around a little bit in terms of brought some new guys in. I know they've, they've brought some players in over the course of the last kind of couple of weeks, guys on loan. And, and from and from our sides and probably still trying to probably re gel if you like because they've probably got their, their team together for the start of the season and I've came in and, and maybe um they obviously didn't start well and they've got some guys in to try and change it up but eleven goals for Athley I'm unbelievable. I uh when I first saw the graphic um I thought I'd been like a mistake mistake like someone impressed like one one and one one of, well yeah and uh <laughs> When I when I eventually read into it and realised that Arfley had scored eleven goals, I was like, "That's just incredible." That is, that is what they were like last season, you know, undefeated. That whole, yeah, uh, I think it was Conference A and unreal uh, to beat a team that I think will be kind of near the bottom with them. Um, I tell you what, I was surprised, you know, shock Pikachu face meme and whatever else, you know. Um, Aye, but they are for a good side. But when they when you step up to the the conf, or what well, the old conferences to the Premier, we didn't feel like right. These are good sides. Obviously, like the Canvas Lang, uh, Peter Hill probably lost a few more players than I think Arfley did in terms of their squad. But um, it's just mental. Eleven. I, 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 you know, we, we could comprehend that probably more so in the conferences because there was a wee bit of golfing quality but when you're looking at two premier teams that is a massive massive shock um it's probably something you would i mean we don't even get scores like that in the lone league now you know the last team was probably what really leaving that people were putting or clubs were putting their uh, loads past and uh yeah fair play to Arfley. i don't know where that came from but if they, it's the sort of result that will have the boys' confidences sky high, um, and I think out the three that got promoted, I would probably give them the the, the biggest chance to stay up in the prem this season. No, oh, absolutely, that's two wins in the pound for Athlone. Certainly, um, 
But the other two teams, I think Canberra Slang and PRSL definitely look like um, they've, they're going to struggle. The only thing I think Athlete will, will be disappointed in is they've lost three points because of um, a player on the eligible player um, yep. in the season. So they'll be a bit guided with that because they've been effects. even higher up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so kind of, they're obviously sitting there in the, the third spot for relegation just now, but certainly would, would be higher given um, that hadn't happened. But uh, two wins in the bounce and they certainly look like a team that could could keep going and, and do will do well and uh, the teams that are above them the lags is other meadows probably looking over their shoulders saying well athlete if they hit this form and, and get going and, and we don't get an act together then we could be in a, a, a spot of bother and, and find ourselves in that relegation spot so obviously it's it's not necessarily going to be three up three down and uh, and they'll certainly come three up but it might not be three down depending on what happens in the lower leagues we'll, we'll find out what happens there also towards the end of the season it could be um, it could be as much as five I think it really gets depending on um, who wins playoffs and, and things like that as well so yeah. um, it's, it's it's interesting to see how that ha- plays out but um, yeah I thought a good, good, good side and still to play them this year I think we're meant to play them on a Friday night um, at Buffs Park, so that'll be. I'm looking forward to that. Can't be a Friday night game under the lights for for us. Next game then within the West of Scotland Premier League: Auckland Talbot one, Kirk and Tillip, Rob Roy two. Uh, Stuart Maxwell has got Kirk and Tillip, Rob Roy flying. I would say at the moment, Chris. Uh, Auckland another disappointing result. No wins in three for them. I mean. You're seeing things on, on social media about Talbot's season being done. Um, we kind of alluded to that a couple of weeks back. Yep. Um, it's not got any better as far as I'm concerned for, for Talbot. There's something wrong at Talbot at Auckland just now, certainly for me. I, I don't know what it is. They sold, obviously, Jamie Glasgow the other week to, to Darvo. They haven't managed to bring MD in yet to, to replace him and uh, or even bring in any other players for that matter. They, they brought a couple of guys at the start of the season, but no guys that we'd say were, were any great shakes and kind of you know, setting the world alight. The other teams are improving week on, week out. And I don't know where they're going like, to go from here. I don't want to talk too much about Tommy Sloan and what... Um, We've done that kind of last week, yeah, we? Yeah, so I think from, from that perspective, the big question is, does he see out the season? I think at this point in time, how how much can Ocken like take of having poor league form? It's all well and good having cut, cut runs, but Ocken like are, are, are a league team and you can't completely discount them, but they're, they're going to have to get their act together pretty soon. We have to give a wee bit of respect to, to Rob Roy as well because they are a decent yeah. team. Um, but in terms of Ocken, like, they're just, I, I don't know what it is. Um, it's a bit like we, we talked about Berwick earlier. There's a, you don't have to be really involved in the club, but you know something's not right. Yeah. Um, and you, you just it's just a sense, and I think Auckland Lake fans are getting a wee bit. I mean, they had a great occasion last last week, obviously, and, and Andy Leishman's um, testimonial game. Yep. It was all smiles, and it did feel a wee bit like of almost like an end of an era type thing. Um, obviously, Andy's still playing; he's still a great keeper. But um, yeah, yeah, we've talked about it a lot, haven't we? In terms of where do they go? Does does Tommy see? The, I think again, I've said Tommy. If if he wants to, yeah, he should be given the chance to. Uh, we're still really early into the season, and but I don't see them being right up there anymore. I just don't see it. I just don't see Talbot um, being in the. Would I say I don't even think they'll be in the top six if they, they continue to play like that? And that that that's that is like a shock to my system saying that and I'll probably get slagged if somehow they turn it round and, and Tommy Sloan gets them firing again but I just don't see it at the moment and it's something that I'm not used to and certainly a lot of people are not used to when talking about Talbot that they're, that they're just this sort of mediocre um, league team at the moment and again you can you can get a wee bit of glory in the Cups, you can go far in the Scottish Cup you can win the South Challenge Cup but if you're not doing well in the league it's probably not a a successful season if you're a Talbot because if you're rocking like Talbot you want to be good in the league you want to be good in the cups and um, it's not one or it's not one or the other with a team like Talbot you have to be firing on all fronts yeah I think the the locals um, 
we'll always expect Talbot to be the best team yeah. all the time. And I think it's, it goes back to the point I made earlier. Other teams are improving yeah. around the league, whether it's Darvo, it's Pollock, it's Quinn Rangers, Cumnock. All these teams are getting better. Clyde Bank as well. Um, all, all sides are, are improving in the league. And it's a, maybe a bit of complacency there within Ork and Lake Talbot, where they've they've been this great team and, and maybe there's an expectation there that they can go out and, and just dust a team like Kirk and Tart Rob Roy. But as you mentioned, they've, they've the great start of the season, Rob Roy, Stuart Maxwell, the great manager's been there for, for a number of years and he's been building something there. And they maybe haven't been the greatest team over the last few years, but they're improving every year. I think that's the thing about Kirk and Tart Rob Roy is that they're proof they're obviously they're playing out a Cumberland, so it's, it's not it's not perfect for them as a club and they're, they're doing what they can with what they've got in front of them and a 2-1 victory away to, to Auckland Lake is a, is a brilliant result for um, for for Rob Roy and they were obviously they had come they had come up last week and were unfortunate to, to lose that game um, I know we covered them um, Jordan Moore um, in a bit of detail um, last week because yeah. <laughs> Just for, for clarity, we were only purely talking about Jordan Muir's ability as a football player and it had nothing to do with his celebration. Um, yeah, um, apologies to Stuart Maxwell, Maxwell. We did not know that um, Jordan Muir had done that in terms of it because um, obviously we, we talked him up as a you know one of the top strikers in the, the West of Scotland Premier at, the, um, at that moment. Um, I think we had heard that he had been sent off, but we thought it was kind of like a dissent thing. Uh, not the fact that he sort of slid, done a, done a bit of a Lewis Suarez up to uh, Stuart Maxwell. But um, yeah, obviously no no disrespect intended for uh, for Rob Roy or, or Stuart himself, obviously. We, we, it's one of these things, it's the danger of doing a podcast. Um, sometimes uh, you don't have all the information and uh, yeah, you... You, you find out stuff after the fact. So um, if, yeah, there's been a few times I've kind of been called up Called um, called out on a few things, and it's like, well, we didn't actually know that at the time because it, either it wasn't announced or, you know, uh, that sort of thing. So um, yeah, forgive us, Stuart, um, top top manager, great result against Auckland. Like, uh, hopefully, fair I don't have to, I don't have to suck up to him too much. <laughs> I got to say though, fair play to Maxi on the celebration because he did not react at nope. all, which I think many other managers would have struggled to um, not react oh, to that yeah. situation. So fair play to him on that, on that front. Looking ahead to the next game, then Clyde Bank 3, Lags Thistle 2, and our defeat for Lags, two wins and a bounce for Clyde Bank. Moff will be delighted that they're starting to, to pick up a bit of form up and get some results in the table because it was just looking really, really doom and gloom for Clyde Bank for a, a, a lot of time there and they were they were really struggling, but um, they'll be delighted to get, the, to get the win. I think they were obviously hanging on to what listen to Moff's interview after the match and they were kind of hanging on. There was also a, a bit of a dubious um, yellow card situation where uh, Kev Green got um, yep. absolutely leg burst open, sent to hospital for stitches, and the ref said it's only yellow cards. And Clay Bank and made all the subs, so they've had to um, play the rest of the game with ten men and kind of hang on for for the win. But they've obviously managed to grind it out, showed a bit of resilience and character to, to get the result against Lags. Lags don't look like a great side to be honest at the moment. They're they are really, really struggling and they keep one of those teams that we mentioned that they will be looking over their shoulder at Arthur coming up and um I don't know where Lags go from here. That they have made a signing in the last couple of days but David yep. Ramsey, uh, who decent striker at this level. Uh, he's got a bit of pace about him something adds something different for uh, for Lags but yeah I don't know where they go personally from here. Yeah, I was one. I was going to ask you that: Is David Ramsey not a band, band sort of name going from a, uh, going from the Buffs to the Meta? But um, you know, it's a good signing. Obviously, they need a wee bit of extra support up front. The t- the tackle, I've not seen the tackle. Obviously, I've seen the a- uh, the aftermath of the tackle. The picture's uh, horrendous. That should come with a warning. That picture, man. I I actually thought it was Danny McGonagall to begin with because it was him that shared the the picture. Oh, the but post, yeah, 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 right. yeah. And then, uh, I mean. Young guys listening to this, if there is any sort of younger boys that listen in, they'll not understand this. But um, I mean, to me, that is like the old style boot tackle. You know, the the sort of 
the screw-in studs. I mean, I, I don't know. If, you, if you're playing in moldies and light boots, I mean, you must have had to go right through Rattle that. Them, yeah. yeah, because, you know, I, I've still got stud marks to this day on my shins when I played football. And that, they were with heavier boots. They were with, uh, you know, like the old World style. Uh, the World Cup design. <laughs> Puma Kings. Uh, now, you're, now you're back with the, the moulds and... To do that to a player, to actually like, it's almost like he's a chunk of his leg, and I'm assuming he's, I'm mean, assuming he's wearing moldies. But I mean, to do that with moldies, that you would have had to go for them. You would have had that would have been a red card aye, without even seeing the tackle. That aye, yeah. he's caught him. You can tell the, the damage is there. Aye. You see, he's caught him high. Um, I know this day age players, the shin guards they wear maybe don't protect the the skin and things like that as much as they used to, but um, they're more there for the bone and. To prevent leg breaks and stuff like that, but um, that looks horrible. It's, but it's minging, horrible. yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's absolutely. I mean, don't I, 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 anyone listening who hasn't seen it yet, I, I wouldn't go looking for it because it's, <laughs> it's, it's disgusting. Um, because I'd seen it on Twitter and yeah. then I, I, one of the group chats, I'm in somebody posting it, I'd kind of forgotten about it. And then I was about to have my dinner and someone posted in the group chat, I was like, oh, oh my god, that is disgusting! Like, thanks, um, but. Yeah, from back to the, the actual football, it's it's a, another good one for Clyde Bank. They'll be they'll be happy. They also don't have Scottish Cup action next week. Have the loss to, to Spartans um, in the first round, so uh, I can't remember who they play at the moment. But Clyde Bank just need to keep building. Um, I think they've they'll be trying to bring in players. I'm sure that will be still be what they'll be, they'll be all about. And, uh, but I've mentioned the play of times a good play of time for Clyde Bank. So. Mm-hmm. Um, glad to see them getting a result. They're a team that probably I'd say similar kind of level to ourselves, so um, they'll, they'll be they'll be all right as well. Absolutely no worries about that. But Largs, I think, got to worry for Largs personally. I think did see it from last week from from the game that we played, and by all accounts they were they were okay. And then they got a penalty for one of the goals, for example. It wasn't like a um, I think three two probably does them an injustice. It does Clay Bank an injustice because I think they were in control and had the game. Um, and wrapped up and uh, but yeah I don't know say lags so hopefully I need to get some some more bodies in and improve things but certainly um got to be concerned if you're a lag supporter. Yep. Next game then Cumberland Juniors three B Juniors three uh Brian McGinty versus Chris Stein um in the down at Townhead Park it looked like a game I watched the highlights of this one this morning and it looked like a game of just kind of individual mistakes across the board and for, for pretty much most of the goals I think the Beath goals two of them are the goalie's fault the, the last one for example Beath go 3-2 up and the goalie spilled it right in front of Brendan Sharp and you can't give a striker like Brendan Sharp an opportunity in front of goal like absolutely no way the keepers keepers dropped it he's tapped it in three each and come and get a point from being 3-2 down but He's kind of fumbled it. It's going. Out, it looks like it's going out for a, a goal kick, and he's kind of went to save it. He's fumbled it, and he's just put it like on yeah, a plate for, yeah. uh, for see a striker like Brendan Sharp. You can't give him, you can't give him a minute in front of goal, and especially with pretty much an open net. He's t- he's top it in for for a point. But come on, be disappointed. I think um, given um, where they how they've started and. Uh, but equally so will be and, and so will Strainy, um because the goals they have conceded are from you know goalkeeping mistakes, individual errors, if you like. And uh, but come look at our team that will, will keep going, and, and they've obviously rejuvenated from last season, and, and they'll they'll be they'll be a good team, and they'll they'll challenge absolutely, no doubt about that. Right, next game then, of medal four, Hurlford three. Um, a good win for Evan Meadow. Certainly, they've yeah. been a team that have been absolutely toiling. Um, I, I take all the pleasure in that, obviously. <laughs> um, but there's been a bit of a fire sale at um, Evan Meadow this week in terms of uh, a couple of players been up and put out um, on the transfer list Jamie White and Kieran Bebekri. Um, Kieran Bebekri situation is hilarious given the fact that. Um, he signed for Cumnock and they ended up having to do a deal, I think, to get uh, Bebeke released from because he announced his signing with Arthur Meadow with a shirt in front of him and all that jazz. And by natural fact, he'd been, been signed by um, by Cumnock and the papers have been put in for him to sign for Cumnock and he'd agreed a deal with them. So 
I mean, it's only, what, three months in the season. New man just came in and he doesn't like the look of a Bethe already and he's got him on the transfer list. Um, but they brought in Louis Kerr from, from Whitlitz and he's managed to grab a goal. And yep. I think the first thing you noticed from having Meadow yesterday, they scored a four, but also four different goal scorers because they relied so much on Callum Graham getting goals for, for them. But they'll be delighted to get different scorers and get us out. It sounds like it was obviously a pretty close game. I've not seen any highlights in that yet from, from that game, but George Grierson will be happy to get his first win, but who knows what will happen with, with, uh, with Meadow, really, because I think they're still going to have to bring more bodies in because they've, they've shipped out a few in the last few weeks and they've got guys that are, like I say, on the, on the transfer list to get to get sold, so I don't know where how Meadow go from here. I mean, the good thing is the, you know, the the different scorers because obviously um losing Kier Milligan and David Ramsey uh, to transfers out of the club and then Lewis Kerr actually he's an interesting one because uh, I actually think he's a really good midfielder Whitlitz um, really decent player I quite I, I rate him actually he's I noticed one thing about him um he's really good sort of dead ball specialist really good at free kicks and stuff like that so if you have if you can have um, a player like that at this level that's good at these sort of things um. Just helps you out, obviously, with, with set pieces. Um, but yeah, uh, good win. Wasn't expecting it, um, especially uh, after the sort of we mentioned the kind of uproar of players leaving or wanting to leave or whatever the situation is. Um, but yeah, um, a, a win to build on, isn't it? Yeah, I still, I'm not too sure because you see, they have got rid of all these strikers. I, I don't remember them being necessarily top heavy on mm-hmm. strikers. And They've got Boyd, they've got um, Graham, uh, I see only two, Jamie Martin, I guess, back to fitness as well. So I guess maybe go with those three and, and they're, they're getting rid of the guys that obviously they don't, the manager doesn't rate, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Beckley's a, a striker that, that was on fire for Cumbernauld. Um, he was probably the standout player for Cumbernauld, but for whatever reason, he's just absolutely not done it in Evermeadow um, at all. Well, he's been given a chance or not. I don't know, but I think there's a few questions around his fitness, for example, and um, I don't know, maybe I've heard some rumours of, of maybe some attitude problems as well, which yeah. you can't have in your team, and George Grierson's a, is an experienced manager, he, he's been around the block, and, and he won't stand for any of that kind of crap on his team, so uh, that's maybe the reason for Becky's up for sale. Just, one with Jamie White, I'm surprised about, because he's a good centre-half, He's um, he, he does all right from, from uh, Arthur Meadow, he's a He's a player that's I know well from uh, Coen Rangers, and he's the kind of guy that just does his does his thing. He doesn't do anything flashy. He, he clears the decks and, and keeps the, the back line solid a, a lot of time. And a couple of guys at the start of the season, and, and the likes of Brian Morton for, from Pollock and uh, Jamie's been out of the side. So maybe it's a case of Jamie maybe wanting to go and play somewhere else. I know he's he's not the kind of person that's probably in it for for loads of money, and he's he just want to play football and. Signing for his local team, I think he lives about two minutes down the road from Meadow Park, so it probably suited him to go and play there. But they obviously try to do something different to try and balance the books to bring in players. I don't know, they'll obviously be hurting from, from losing the Scottish Cup um, to Hill of Beef and they may be banked on, on that being you know, part of their budget for the season. So maybe just having to try and balance the books, get some guys out to, get, to bring guys in. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with, with Meadow. Yeah, and I think we've got to remember that Kieran is still a young player as well. Uh, I know we, we talk about sort of attitude and stuff like that, but when, with the younger players, I think y- you can grow them out of it um, with, you know, the right way of approaching them, if that makes sense. You know, I think some, I always see it as some guys need a kick up the backside and other boys need a wee bit of a, you know, a arm around the shoulder type thing. But um, yeah, it's disappointing with Kieran because he is quite highly rated. Um, but We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, he can settle down and, and get another club because uh, it seems like obviously Meda, um, you know, one shot of them. I was actually surprised Lags didn't sign him. To be honest, I thought that would have been the, the kind of signing that would have suited Lags. They're looking for a goal scorer. He is that kind of player, uh, but they're waiting for Ramsey. I don't know. Maybe they might still go for Rebecca. I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't uh, be shocked if they're looking for for guys to come in, but certainly. Yeah, I don't know where he goes personally. Maybe does he go to the the, the, the first division and maybe go there, get some confidence, but get some goals, and maybe maybe, maybe make a move at the next season. I, I don't know, but it'll be an interesting watch. I always keep an eye on what things are happening. 
um, over in Irvine for sure. Right, moving on then, Toon won, Canvas Line Rangers won. Canvas Line struggling big time now, and I think in this league, Toon and our team going quietly about their business and getting picking up results and um, climbing the table and, and getting wins on the board. And, um, despite being a maybe I would say a bit stop stop start, two wins in the bounce and a clean sheet for for Trin. Um, Jimmy covered and uh, Dean Keenan will be absolutely delighted about that. I know Dean's a big fan of the podcast. And, um, <laughs> I never checked to see if Sam Jameson scored, but um, if he did, then he's he's trying to get that elite tag back on, I guess. Yeah, um, Trin, uh, Trin's a bit of a weird one because we kind of talked them up. They've done really well, you know, uh, the sort of last few seasons and then uh, obviously COVID happened and it kind of kind of took a bit of a turn, didn't it? Uh, I think they lost a few players in that, but um, yeah, yeah, they're doing all right. Again, uh, probably always had that doing all right tag, as you call it, or doing okay Doing tag. fine. Doing fine tag. Doing that's fine. It. That's doing the one. Fine, yeah. yeah, that's the one. I, I knew it was one of those, one of those <laughs> ones, you know. They, they all mean the same thing. Eh, but... Aye, aye, absolutely. I'll get that. We can get that on a t-shirt. Doing just fine. Then put some club badges on it. Just some different <laughs> badges on t-shirt. So. And we would need, uh, we would need the whole shirt front and back. I think. <laughs> Next game then is is my game. Conor just won. Paul won. Um, it was a decent game. Um, a football. We were pretty poor in the first half. Paul were the better side, but we we come out second half firing, but. And our day, we 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 still won that game. I'll be honest, the referee, I'll be honest, has had an absolute shocker of a game. He's he's had for both teams, not just for the Buffs. He's had he's had a poor 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 game. Yellow cards are flying like for for just normal tackles and books. Das Christie for diving, which I thought was a free kick. But Gav Millen, Gav Miller for diving. I think thirty seconds after he came on the park for diving in the middle of the park. I mean, he's he's on the halfway line. Gav, I mean, I've watched the video back. He's, he's the boy's stamped on his toe, and he gas went down, and the rest booked him for diving. It's just like he's, he's not had a great game uh, by 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 all means, and it, it kind of spoiled the, the whole the whole match for me. Uh, but Parker, I mean, Parker a decent save. So from our yeah. perspective, I think a point is is, is a decent result. Um, however, on the day, I'd have been disappointed we didn't win it in the end. Yeah, I'll be. I don't like when refs don't let the game flow. Uh, kind of stop start. It's it, it's not really great viewing for the spectators, and it's obviously frustrating for the players when that happens as well. Uh, I did see you were giving to got mad love uh, to Kieran Wood um, recently on your Twitter. Did like really bad, well at the right, box. Bad, oh, Woods is <laughs> Woods is a, a phenomenon. He's um, he's been with us now for two years. Uh, it was probably quite unfortunate to be out the side um, at the start of the season. Uh, Gorms had brought in uh, Don Bowling from from Darvo, and Woodsy predominantly been a been a right back was out the side because Dom came in. I think Woodsy missed some pre season was unfortunate. Um, I think just played bad timing, missed missed a chunk of pre season, so didn't start didn't start the right back for us. And, um, he he was out the side and. We'd had a few defensive issues and we were kind of surprised it was he didn't come back into the team. And uh, but he he's an absolute pro. Is is Kieran Wood and he went and played with our twenties, for example, one week um, in the development league as a um, an overage player. And from all accounts, he was again a consummate professional and, and was great support to the twenties boys. And they, they gained a lot of experience from playing with a, a guy like him. And he came back into the side. I think he first. Came on against Rutherglen in the Scottish Cup game, the another replay, the the first match, and I think he played maybe twenty minutes of that game, and well, you could see straight away that that Woodsy had that ability, and, and the guy we were kind of missing both going forward and defensively. Mm-hmm. He then, I think he started at left. He started. He started left back, and he's played left back for the last three weeks, and he's he's a right back by by trade, and. Um, I think he started life as a centre half and moved over to the to right back and he's playing left back for us and he's been absolutely outstanding. Got player of the month this, um, for us this since the first September. He's, he's scoring goals. He's he, he's a nuisance at um, at corners and set pieces and things like that. So yeah, great player. And I've got a lot of time for for which he's a person. So absolutely delighted to see him get the to get another goal. I think he scored last week and the week before. So he's up to Good. three for the season. But yeah, absolutely. I can, Sitting wax club with the guy all day for 
if you allowed me to, Chris, so we'll, so we'll move on from, from that. <laughs> but yeah, so looking at Paul, they, I mean, they've got uh, some decent players and some guys I didn't really know about. The the one that stood out for me was Fraser Mullen, right back, um, signed from County Beath in the summer. A guy we didn't know an awful lot about coming into the side, but he's um, he looks great going forward. He's, he's, he's got a, a good attack on him and they've also got guys like Daz Christie and um, Stuart McCann, who are, are, are brilliant at this level and always have been. Daz, I mean, had a quiet game, but from what I, uh, I seen, didn't see an awful lot from him. Uh, the boy Buchanan, the Robbie Buchanan, playing up mm-hmm. front, he was he was excellent too. So good individual players. Didn't really rate their defence, their, their centre backs all that much. The, the centre backs love a foul, to be fair. Um, the ref did not spot. It was um, it was pretty poor. 1v1s versus Dana Mark and the boys are they're all over them. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just like the ref's just not bottom to get fouls. And it's like and that's why it was disappointing from our perspective on the ref's performance, because it just was both teams were, were getting let down and it was situations where you're just looking at it going, you're just shocked by by the decisions that were made because like even like there was one I think where it was clearly a foul on the pollock player and the pollock player's like picked the ball up because he's felt expecting to be a foul. And everyone mm-hmm. stopped thinking it's a foul, and then the ref broke him for handball because he <laughs> handled the ball. And it's just like, but yeah, one one of those games where we, we should have won, but we will be building up. We've got a big game um, in a couple of weeks against Forth. We've we'll got Glasgow Perth in the cup next next Saturday away, so um, we'll focus our attention on it, on a cup action, and we'll see how it how it goes. But it certainly we're going the right direction, and I'm happy with what, what I'm seeing on the park. That, that's for sure. Okay, another couple of games then we'll cover off in the other divisions across the west of Scotland. We'll just jump straight to the match between St Caddox and Benburb. 3-2 victory for Benburb. Benburb just signed Darren Miller on loan from Darvel. Now, for me, Darren Miller is a player that could play for any team in the Premier League. Absolutely no doubt about it. Um, I think he's probably, I think he's local to Glasgow. Um, certainly, I think he's good friends with is it Aaron Black? I think it is maybe the plays mm-hmm. for Benbur, but used to be Darvel. Um, so maybe he's went there to play with his mates and get some game time. Because I know Darren wasn't playing for for a lot for uh, Darvel. They have obviously strengthened their, their side over the last um, year or two, and, and Dad's is getting on a bit now. So he's probably looking to play game, get games, and but I was surprised that move. I, I, as I say, he could go to any team in the, in the Prem, absolutely no danger, and would still be a, a great player for anyone. So uh, he's come in, and, and they've also got a result against St. Cardox, who St. Cardox, a team we know, have spent a bit of dough and brought some guys in. Um, but yeah, fair play to Ben Bob, good result. Yeah, Darren Miller, I think, got two assists in the game as well. Yeah. I mean, I, Daz is a, a quality player, like you said, and uh, I think he had a few injury issues um, earlier in the season. I think that's maybe why he's not been in the team as such. But, um, yeah, it's, it's solely about game time. It's only until January so far to uh, see how he does. But I, I expect Darren to be coming back to Darvel. But I tell you what, they've got a stacked midfield now. So it's going to be tough for um, for someone like Darren. Even though he's quality, you know, it's pretty much the same as the forward line, obviously. If someone like Alan McKenzie's, you know, keeping out Lewis Morrison and... They've got so many good players that, you know, an injury or a suspension, you could be at that team and, and it's very tough to get back because of the quality that that team have. No, definitely. We've obviously talked about Darvel's depth and, and strength. And Bear Bob are a good side as well. So Dan, Dan will fan and I play and they'll play well. They've got guys like, say, Aaron Black, Lewis Lovering, guys that, are, that should be playing in the Prem as far as I'm concerned. I think I'm surprised that Lewis Lovering still kicks about playing for Ben Bob. I know obviously there's a family connection with Ben Bob. He's, mm-hmm. um, his dad's a, I think dad's the manager, his, his granddad's the, the chairman, he's, I think Ma works in the bar, his grand does the pies and it's like a proper family affair in terms of the club. So um, that's probably why he's still playing for Ben Bob, but he's a player that could be playing, as I say. He could he can go to a team like Auchinleck, Clyde Bank, Cowan and Paul, not a problem. Um, Lewis Lovering, I, I, he's, a, he's a top, top player and uh, the luck he have him. Final game I mentioned then is a Drossing win in Rovers versus Fit Fit Heart. A Drossing won 5-1 um, in the third division. And a great result for a Drossing, but um, the reason we're bringing up a Drossing is the fact they managed to sign uh, Ryan Wilson from St Caddox. 
Ryan Wilson scored, I think, 40-odd goals last season for that year. Um, in the conferences, Ryan Wilson could have been a player, talking about players that um, that could be playing the Prem. Ryan Wilson's a striker that could be playing Premiership football um, yep. all day long. He's the kind of guy that probably would have been really suited, suited to go and play for a team like Largs. Um, or, or any, in fact, as I say, probably most teams um, in the Prem, he would be a great, a great player to have. But he's um, chosen to sign for uh, Win Rovers, and that's a massive signing for them in terms of um, their aspirations to win um, or get promoted in the second division. I know Ryan's a local boy, so maybe it suits him to play for for a draw soon. But the team that, that the Gaff Hughes is building there is, is, is looking good. Guys like Keenan uh, McLaughlin, Liam McGuinness, they signed Ricky Hanvey from the bus um, at the, the start of the season as well. I wouldn't be shocked to see Jamie White go there, personally. Um, that I don't know anything. That's not me knowing any sort of secret squirrel stuff or anything like that. That's just me surmising. Yeah. Um, they've got there's a lot of ex buffs players that have played together on that side. And, um, talking about playing with your mates and stuff like that, it might, might suit them to, to go there. But uh, a Drossen, I think he'd maybe get, I say, maybe a centre-half in like, like, like Jamie would be, would be ideal and and they'd be good value to win that league, I think, personally. Yeah, I agree. Um, Ardrossan are always a, a really good team. Um, the last couple of years, I think they've always been kind of near the top as well uh, in their respective leagues. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm watching with interest, obviously, winning. Um, funny enough, I don't know if I can say this, but they're, they're not a team that actually is covered by me at non-league. There is a researcher, the boy that does Rangers, also does uh, Ardrossan winning. Uh, Rover, so I always look at how he's rated players because sometimes I feel he rates them qu- quite low um, right, compared okay. to, to other teams. So I don't know. He's obviously um, I, I sometimes I have to review their team and kind of just up them a wee bit better because they are probably rated a wee bit higher. So um, yeah, Craig Craig watches went in when he doesn't watch Rangers. So uh, um, interesting. There we go. We'll keep an eye out for that in the next um, the next um, version of Football Manager for sure. Um, that's all pretty much it for us on the official catch up for another week. Um, we'll be back as always next week. Chris, where do we find um, as if you haven't already got us on the socials? Official catch up on Twitter, Lonely Catch Up on Facebook, and we're pretty much everywhere. Official catch up, non league podcast. I'll type in anything and you'll, you'll find us, no doubt. Um, yeah, uh, cup football the next couple of weeks. So It'll be a good variety of teams that we can cover. Obviously, we, we tend to cover a lot of the, the Lowlands the, and the tiers below now, where it was probably mainly the Lone League uh, to begin with, Ben, but obviously your knowledge of the West and me um, looking at the East as well. And um, We'll see. We'll figure it out with the South, I think, eventually, once there's been more than a handful of games uh, played. But now I think we're we're pretty kind of settled in it weekly now, Ben, a couple of... A couple of yeah, yeah. Uh, where can we find you, Ben? Uh, at Mr. Ben Grant on Twitter, as always. Um, it's been it's been a bit quiet in the in the um, in the abuse front the last couple of weeks. I, I didn't take any heat from Cole Burnley, which I'm surprised about. For maybe what would have got back to to Cole Burnley, but um, maybe the Auckland like fans will be listening, and maybe they want to have a have a pop. We got a bit of praise actually from a few Are of the West that? Yeah, last yeah, yeah, week. Yeah. Okay, so we're never too pally with anyone that we can throw out. Um, criticism when it's warranted. Um, obviously, as I always say, never personal. It's, it's only just opinions and um, all based on football, usually, um, I would say. It will absolutely take it back. If you don't yep. agree with that, that's absolutely allowed as well. We're not going to ignore it. But uh, thanks for listening or watching. If you're on YouTube, if you're on YouTube, remember, if you are on YouTube, do the old like and subscribe, ring that notification bell, all that things that you see on, <laughs> if you're a YouTuber on it, you've got to do all, you want to make sure you do all that. Um, but thanks for, for watching, listening, as I say, and we'll be back next week. Cheers.